You can see why they call this place Pigeon Square. Well, look at these baklavas. You smell fairly strong. What the meanies up Got mince meat, kebabs. There's bears and wolves up here. Now she's absolutely bricking it. can see why they call this place Pigeon Square. Never seen so many pigeons in one place. I think this little girl is trying to grow up to be the bird lady off Home Alone. I had to go back for a second one because honestly this is some of the best coffee I've had. Let's pour, pour it right. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. She's been saying she's going to call me out on it. Right. No pressure. That's a lot better, isn't it? <laughs> Much smoother than last time. The spoon was hiding there. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Not a drop wasted. I love these little sets, though. This is like proper traditional Ottoman-style tea. And that's your shop. Coffee. There's a shop right behind Jack, actually, that sells all that sort of stuff. And he's just told me that behind us there is the original. Yeah, so we're going to go have a little walk. You get Turkish tea in it as well. Take two. Just as good. Try it. Shall I? Yeah, you, you, it's got sugar in it. Is it hot, hot? No, it's not hot. You it smells like, very strong. It's really strong. It smells it. You'll like it though because it's sweet because there's a sugar cube in it. Bad. Well, look at these baklavas. Unreal. Like Turkish delights here. Right, guys, we just got to our room called Guest House Time Out, which is conveniently located right in the middle of the old town. So I'm going to pass the camera over to Kit for a quick room tour before we mess the room up. <laughs> Our stuff's everywhere. Yeah, we consciously remember to do the room tour before we unpack all of our things that we normally do. So, this is the door that we've just come through, and then we have the bathroom here. I've actually not gone in. Toilet, sink, mirror, towels. Oh, the shower's nice. So, yeah, a laundry basket too. And then we've got a little kitchen area here with a sink and a little portable hob kettle and then we can make tea and coffee a little table here double bed clothing rail some slippers on there and a tv up here nice and clean cozy Ooh, yeah it is so many uh, pillows <laughs> bedside tables what's the view like this is the view yeah, the house, yeah. <laughs> The view of the house. Oh, we've got a balcony as well. Oh, yeah. Balcony. Oh, we didn't even know we had a balcony. I think it's shared. There's a different. There's another room there. So, a balcony area, which is nice. So yeah, you can literally see that's where we've just come from. There. It literally took us three minutes to walk here, so that was handy. Yeah. Nice Probably less room. than that. Double done. Welcome back to beautiful Sarajevo. Kit's still terrified of pigeons. And we're just making our way now into the old bazaar area. Yeah, a lot of gift shops here. We're going to get some chivapi, some traditional Bosnian kebabs. Yeah, really nice. It's all Ottoman, traditional Ottoman. Yeah, it is. Nice, nice, yeah. I'm gonna try to find a Winter Olympic T-shirt while I'm here as well. I've just exchanged some money as well, and it's roughly around double, double and a little bit more for your money for pound, to pound. The Bosnian mark to pounds tends to be just over double. 
So we got three coffees. I got two traditional Bosnian coffees and Kit got a latte. And it came to 11 mark, which is about six quid. Good value for money here in Bosnia. Considering this is the capital as well and probably the most touristy part of the country. All oh, this traditional Ottoman architecture. So Sarajevo was discovered by the Ottoman Empire in the 14th century and it's a real melting pot of cultures here. So it's predominantly Islam, however there's lots of Christians, Catholics, Jewish people, so it's a real melting pot. They call it the Jerusalem of Europe. Yeah. Well, <laughs> online. <laughs> Some nice touristy bits here. Look at the mountains in the distance over here. Right guys, we've just sat down at a local restaurant. One good thing I've noticed about Bosnia is whatever food you're looking for, it tends to be the name in the restaurant, a lot of places. So this is Chavab Zanika. We've gone for some traditional Bosnian Chavapi and it's just come out straight away. It looks absolutely banging. It came out so quick, like it's been like a minute if that. <laughs> and I've joined Kit for a classic coat. They don't do beer here, so we had no choice. They've got like a dip that comes with it. It's be like a, a yogurt sauce, I think. Can we try it? Do you want to try it first, ladies? I don't know how you meant to eat this. You can use a fork. Use but it. I'm going to go with my So this is like cabbage, you've got minced meat, kebabs. Oh, it's hot. I'm going to take a little bit of each. Nice. Mm -hmm. Right, I've been looking forward to this since I bought Bosnia. First time trying Bosnia and Jibapi. Let's go. Yeah. Nice, I huh? know. That's really nice. It's nice, fresh kebab. Mm. So, more like sausage more than kebab. Think about it. it tastes like kebab, though. Delicious. Honestly guys, if you come to Bosnia, you've got to try the chivapi. The bread, the pit of bread it's in, is more like an Indian naan, isn't it? The, the texture, it's very fluffy and light. And that's what it reminds me of. It's a big portion as well, look. Yeah, it is big. Bearing in mind I've already had two. So. What do you think, yeah? First try of traditional Bosnian food. So far, so good. It's like really it. nice. I really like that. Bosnia is known for its food for our Balkans because they do do great food here. And I can I can say already that the food's been great. First meal I've had here, and the coffee as well. Wow! Right, that was a lovely first experience of Bosnian food. That chivapci was insane, and I really like here the Bashashia, the 15th century Ottoman built old town. It's lovely. I think this is the must see part of Sarajevo here got the bazaar, you got the shopping, you got foods, you got loads of mosques, really nice architecture. All right, I'm gonna get the bill, then we can go for a little explore. Look at them ice creams. Some nice flavors there, isn't there? Cheesecake, Smurf flavor. Pistachio. <laughs> what does that even mean? Wow. Strawberry. You going by the pictures rather than the words? I'm just trying a bit of both. So look all these jams. Sweet shops everywhere. Local jams. Not the strangest flavoured jam. Nice old moss there. <laughs> ah, and we've come all the way back round look. There's another place there, Chivap Zanika. So that's another place you can get the Chivapki. And we're back now in Pigeon Square. So right behind me, this beautiful building behind me, is the Austro-Hungarian built Vietnika City Hall. It looks like a sponge cake. It does, doesn't it? Do you not see it? The different layers. Yeah, it's a beautiful building. And I've actually got a great story about this. So this building behind me was built by the Hungarian Empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, before it was there, there was actually a house 
and it's this house over there called the House of Spite. So where the City Hall now stands, that house was actually there and the owner that lived there was very stubborn and they were telling him he needs to move, he didn't want to. So in the end they offered him a lot of money and rebuilt his house brick by brick right over there. But he wasn't very happy because as his house before was facing this river, the bay window now looking out is facing the other way. So he no longer had the view of the river. So a good fact for you there. But yeah, what a beautiful building. Lovely weather as well, isn't it? Yeah, really good job. I need to get my jacket off to be fair. Really nice capital city. Very clean, very green as well, isn't it, Kit? I love all this. You've got the nice, beautiful minarets from the mosque over here. All this old Ottoman architecture. Right, guys, I've just found out now that the house of Spite is actually a restaurant now. You can see. It doesn't look open now, I don't think. Maybe it's open tonight. Right, we're going to go find a bar now because I want to try a local beer. I love the sound of waterfalls, they're relaxing, isn't it? Always talk on trying to video, you know. <laughs> Dobba Dan, me and Kit have just sat down. We found this lovely bar right on the front, right in front of the river, called Dio, I think it's called. And I finally get to try Sarajevsko. Kit's got a glass of local wine. All right, cheers then, Kit. We need to learn how to say cheers, don't yeah, we? We'll find out in a minute. Cheers. Cheers. Very nice and crisp. Yeah, that's a nice pilsner, that is. Yeah. It's got a very crisp taste. Okay. Really nice. Yeah, go on, taste this. Bosnian beer. What a view with the beer. Sarajevo had a very turbulent past. But this bridge here, the Latin bridge, was where the heir to the Austro Hungarian throne, Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophia, were assassinated. And the bullet was fired from here. Gavrilo Princip assassinated the heir to the Austro Hungarian throne, Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophia. The bullet was shot from here. It's a beautiful bridge. So the bridge was actually originally built with wood, as Kits just found out. And now it's been a of stone, hasn't it? Yeah. I think it got destroyed and then they rebuilt it. But it's crazy because that spot behind me there is literally one of the causing events to World War One, which is mental. Dobba Dan, and we're back again guys. Me and Kit are just gonna make our way now up to the cable car that we're really excited about because we're gonna go to the highest point up, up on the mountain. So apparently from the top, you can see the whole of Sarajevo. Came with supplies. Yeah. Not realizing there's a shop that you're right. It's gonna be set by the time I get up. And we are on the cable car up Trebevi, Trebevi Mountain. Excited, Kit? I am. She's just excited because she's. I'm not making a walk up the mountain. <laughs> yeah, the option was either to walk up to that other place, the yellow fortress, up to this. How much well I take a cable car? We get to walk up steps to get here anyway. It's got a high view anyway. And we've got a cable car to ourselves, so yeah, it's going to be good. This is. Oh, City Hall there, the Sponge Cake building. <laughs> if you stop right now, what are you doing? Just chilling, can't do much, can you? My ears just popped. Did they? Yeah. Still got a long way to go. Yeah. By the way, this cost 20, 
Mark. 20 Bosnian each. Mark, so it's about nine quid return. Yeah. For us two both, quid. for two people. No, that's each. Each. What's that? About 18 quid return for two people. Yeah. For the, top. the meals you've had today have been so good. Chivapi, the drinks, coffees. It's, we literally spent about 18 pounds, didn't we? Yes, yeah, so we worked it out. So for our lunch and the drinks we had at lunch, and then when we went to the bar and had drinks after, it all all together cost about twenty pound, or just under twenty pound, which I think is really good. It's, it's really cheap here in Bosnia, so and cheap. I said to Kit, the people are so friendly. Mm. Honestly, some of the friendliest people I've ever met. And the kids. The kids as well. The kids are lovely. We asked their, these two kids for directions to the cable car because we were lost. And she walked us. Uh, way Salma and her. a little brother. So if you're watching this, Salma, thank you for directions. <laughs> Yeah, because she said she watches a lot of YouTube. I really like Bosnia already. Me too. What are your first impressions then, Kit? Beautiful. Yeah, it is very beautiful. Good food, cheap. Like you said, everyone's friendly. Amazing views. Look at that now. You've gone well away now. Oh my gosh, yeah. My first impression to Bosnia, banging food. <laughs> very, very friendly locals. Amazing architecture, good weather as well, to be fair. Yeah. It's not too hot, it's sunny, but it's not too hot. It's a good temperature for a lot of walking around exploring, isn't it? So as you can see, Sarajevo's in like a valley, which is probably why they get extreme temperatures. So in the winter, they get extreme cold. In the summer, they get extreme heat. In 1984, the Winter Olympics were hosted here. You having a nice time, Kit? Yeah, my ears keep popping though. We're probably literally about as high as a plane flies, aren't we? Literally, yeah. I'm literally heading up towards the clouds. <laughs> well, we were above the clouds last week in Foligandros, mm -hmm. weren't we? From Foligandros to Sarajevo. We're proper up in the mountains here. Kit's already putting a jacket on. It's definitely a lot colder up here than it is down in Sarajevo. Yeah, a lot cooler up in the mountain. It's got that mountain air in it. It's a crisp mountain air. Got the... Look. What? You see my breath. No, can't I can't see it. It's very quiet. You know when you're somewhere as well and the air just smells clean? really nice so it looks like they've got some outdoor routes but where are we we're here Pina Nature Trebevich Peak right up the top up there it's got the difficulty and the time it takes to get up there as well it takes two hours to get to that top peak which is that peak there look from here we going up now? By yourself. <laughs> I'll be at the bar. You enjoy. I'm going to walk up now. It'll be pitch black coming down. That's really cold. It's cooler up here. Definitely. I love this. This kind of thing. Being up in the mountains. In nature. It's lovely. I just told Kit there's bears and wolves up here. Now she's absolutely bricking it. It was horse, I told you. How do you know? I could just tell by how big it was and the shape of it and that. You're a horse expert. Horse <laughs> expert. <laughs> nah, it'd be alright. This has got to be higher than Zakopane, innit, in Poland? Yeah, that didn't take as long to come up. Very peace. Beautiful up here, innit? You can see that communist buildings over there, the old um, Eastern Bloc architecture, the old Yugoslavian buildings. Right guys, we've made it to the abandoned 1984 Sarajevo Winter Olympic bobsled track. A lot of graffiti on it now. Hey. In the Olympics, the Olympians would come bombing it down here, the bobsled teams. 
It starts at the top of the mountain. I don't think it cares at all. <laughs> Effectively, what it is, Kit, it's a massive slide. But you sat in a. You don't know what a bobstead looks like. It's like a. Uh, no, but it reminds me of you know when you're a kid and you go to the fair and you get a That's that's basically what it is. It's like a. It's kind of like a boat that a team will sit in. They'll run and push it, and they'll jump in, and they come down these like turns really fast. What is it? Is that like down the river? Yeah. But they absolutely tank it down here. Interesting stuff. So instead of going back the way we came, we've decided to walk up the bobsled track to get to the top. So here's the tiered seat and it looks like for the bobsled track. We've got the wild horses up here, it's really nice. From up here looking down, you can see all the mosque minarets lit up and you can actually just about hear the azan in the distance as well, the call to prayer. <laughs> 